Welcome to Fight News Now, our final edition of the show for 2014. I'm John Pollock, and on today's show, we're going to be previewing the UFC card coming up this Saturday night in Brazil. We'll also chat about the massive class action lawsuit filed against the UFC. We're going to hear from Mitch Gagnon, Carla Esparza, as well as George St. Pierre, and even Chris Jericho stops by. John Ramdean is here for three rounds, plus the shift, one more viral video, and we started off with this week's newsmakers. On Tuesday afternoon, a class action lawsuit was filed in U.S. District Court in San Jose against Zufa LLC with fighters Kung Lee, Nate Quarry, and John Fitch attached to the suit. The suit accuses Zufa of maintaining a monopoly in the industry and are seeking treble damages and injunctive relief under the Sherman Antitrust Act. We now hear from co-counsel for the plaintiffs, Benjamin Brown. UFC was built on the backs of fighters. It was built on the battered bodies of MMA athletes who have left their blood and sweat in the octagon. These fighters sacrifice an incredible amount for the sport. Yet the UFC has paid fighters far less than what it would have paid in a truly competitive environment. The fact is that elite MMA fighters earn a mere fraction of the revenue uh, generated by bouts as compared to their counterparts in boxing. And due to the UFC's anti-competitive scheme, the UFC's profit margins are the highest or among the highest in all of sports. Now, the UFC achieved this monopolist position by anti-competitive means. Specifically, the UFC used a series of exclusive arrangements to lock up the important assets for high-level MMA promotion, most importantly, the fighters themselves, and then bought out and shut down its weekend competition. Middleweight CB Dalloway and Lyoto Machida will headline this Saturday's Fight Night card in Brazil. For Machida, he hopes to bounce back from his loss to reigning champion Chris Weidman from this past July, and he meets the surging CB Dalloway, who has won four of his last five and looks for the biggest win of his mixed martial arts career to end 2014. At UFC 175, Chris Weidman and Lyoto Machida gave us one of the fights of the year. Unfortunately for Machida, someone had to lose. And... Despite the loss, the Dragon vowed to fight on. Chris Wyden, he's a tough opponent. He's the true champion. He deserves the title. And I'll be back. I'll be back strong. His first step back towards a title shot will come on Saturday against tough seven runner-up CB Dalloway. The Doberman is a 14-fight UFC veteran, and coming off the biggest win of his career against Francis Carmont, he'll look to top it against the former light heavyweight champion. Dalloway needs extra motivation for this one. He should just take a look at UFC on Fox 4, when his training partner and teammate at Power MMA, Ryan Bader, was knocked senseless by the Dragon. Bader again, pushing the tail. That's it! And it is That's all it. over! That is the problem when you are trying to close the distance on Lyoto Machida. In addition to facing Machida, the 31-year-old will also have to face the rabid Brazilian crowd. However, in his two previous bouts in the country, he hasn't fared too badly. Right hand. Oh! It's a left hook that drops Sazer. CB wait for the opportunity to counter Fajeda in a world of trouble here. CB Dalloway comes to Brazil and gets it done again. If Dalloway can mix up his improved striking with his solid wrestling base, much the way Chris Weidman did at UFC 175, he could put himself in line for a title shot. Machida, on the other hand, needs to go out and make a statement in this one. Machida can't put the Doberman away early. He'll be left with a long road back to the title. However, if he gets Dalloway out of there early, he could be thrust right back into the mix. Can the Doberman take a bite out of the Dragon? Or will Machida finish Dalloway and send the Brazilian fans home happy? The co-feature on Saturday will see the return of former bantamweight champion Henan Barrao in his first fight since losing to TJ Dillashaw this past May, and will meet Sudbury, Ontario's Mitch Gagnon. Barrao is obviously a massive favorite in this fight, but Gagnon is walking into this fight knowing it's the biggest opportunity of his career and prepared to surprise everyone on Saturday. Yeah, you know, uh, when I got a call, I was uh, in disbelief, you know. Uh, I had just come back from uh, my Halifax fight, you know, it was just like a week in uh, from that fight, and I get the call, and a uh, little bit in disbelief because, you know, I, I didn't think Kenan Barrao was even thinking about competing this year. I really thought I was going to, you know, uh, take a break, reassess his, uh, you know, um, he had a bad weight cut, um, had to pull out of that fight against TJ. He lost his title, title early on. I just felt like he needed to... Uh, to take a break and uh, reassess and evaluate, uh, you know, his mistakes. 
uh, as far as if he's there mentally or not, that's, you know, I'm hoping that he is. I, I hope he's not coming in here uh, in the fight, uh, you know, ill or, or not ready for this fight. He's 135 pounds, I'm 135 pounds. Like, you know, I just, uh, I, I really believe in my skill set and I believe that I'm there. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm trying not to, to focus on that right now. I'm focused on my, on, on executing my game plan and, and doing what I have to do to win this fight. Is there any part of you that has a concern about him being on weight for this fight? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, it's uh, August is was just a few months ago, yeah. and uh, you know he had a bad weight cut, and uh, apparently he's he's on on a good diet right now, and he's on point right now. So we'll just have to see. It's that's out of my control. You know, I, the critics don't fuel me more than than what I am already fueled for this fight. You know, I I, I put 100% in every training, regardless of what people's opinion. That's not going to change how I train. Um, as far as as the critics goes, and then uh, me being an underdog, it, it would be crazy not being an underdog. Mm -hmm. It would be crazy uh, if I'd be the favorite. You know, it's just t statistically he he should win this fight. Like uh, I'm, I'm not you know I'm not delusional, but I really believe this is my time. And there's been upsets in, the, in, in, in many times, and this is going to be one of them. This past Friday night, the UFC crowned their first women's strawweight champion as Carla Esparza submitted Rose Nama Yunus in the finals of the Ultimate Fighter Season 20 and now sits atop the 115-pound weight class. And she was on the MMA Report this week to chat about her next likely challenger, Joanna Yedjacek, who defeated Claudia Gedalia this past Saturday night on Fox in a very close fight. I actually did catch that fight. Uh, I thought it was, first, first off, I thought it was a very exciting fight. I really enjoyed watching it. Um, I actually, it was, it was close, it could have gone either way, but, uh, before somebody's hand was raised, I was thinking that Claudia was going to win it, so, um, you know, and I wasn't surprised it went either way, especially with the knockdown at the end of the first, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that surprised a lot of people because Claudia was supposed to be, you know, such a uh, top contender. I haven't had anything in writing or anything official from anybody, but that's pretty much um, the word I'm getting, you know, from, from everybody. Rafael Dos Anjos took a huge leap forward in his career this past weekend, controlling and breaking down Nate Diaz over the course of three rounds. Through a steady output of leg kicks and superior striking, it was an easy fight to score, and the win looks to propel Dos Anjos as the next challenger for the lightweight champion, Anthony Pettis. I would love to have a chance for a title. I've been in UFC for six years. I have 17 fights, you know, and I've been, I moved here. I moved to California for three years ago to chase my dreams, and I've been working a lot, and I've been, I'm getting better every day. I feel that I'm getting better every day, and that's my dream. I wanna, I wanna be a first UFC lightweight Brazilian, hold that belt. And Dos Anjos conveyed his happiness, and he is the subject of this week's Tweet of the Week, promising to win the 155-pound championship in 2015. 2008 Olympic freestyle wrestling gold medalist Henry Cejudo finally made his UFC debut this past Saturday with a commanding three-round decision over Dustin Kimura. Cejudo didn't even get to showcase his world-class wrestling, standing with Kimura for 15 minutes. The fight was contested at 135 pounds after Cejudo failed to make 125 this past August, but he is hoping for another chance to fight at flyweight. I've competed at the Olympics at 121 pounds. I feel like I'm really strong, even at 35 but I feel like I could be a huge force. I can change that whole weight class at 25. It'd be a bad matchup for anybody. I can strike, I can wrestle, uh, you know, bring them. So I, Dana, I, I hope you can allow me. I can give you guys a practice cut. I know if Daniel Cormier can, can, can make 205, <laughs> I, I can definitely make 125 pounds. That's a very good point, I'll, I'll so, point taken. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, nah. you guys hey, heard I trust it. you, man, you're a professional. Well, yeah. you heard him, he said he can do it. It's up to you. You're the professional. You, you, you say you're going to come in at a weight, and, and uh, it's your job to make that weight. I was, you know, 21 years old, and I was cutting weight, you know, to make the Olympic team. And I think the last time I made it was in 2012. I have to put science into my, my training, uh, really concentrate on my nutrition. And the rest is, the rest is history. I, I know what I'm capable of doing. Um, I got good coaches, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really strong at 35. And... I can only imagine myself going back down to 25.
We have heard from numerous fighters about their opinion of former pro wrestler CM Punk being signed to the UFC and scheduled to debut next year. Now we're going to check in with the pro wrestling world and get the reaction from Chris Jericho to Punk's decision of not only leaving the WWE, but going down a completely new path at the age of 36. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's great when, when you go and do stuff outside of, of, uh, of wrestling, and sometimes you need to do that, you know, and um, obviously he, he had that bargaining chip. He was probably knew he was going there when he did the, the, the podcast with all the answers that he gave, and then to go to UFC, it was, uh, you know, I think it was a pretty big, almost like an F you to, to him to, uh, to be able to do that. So it's, it's cool that he had that plan. As CM Punk gets set for his first ever fight camp next year with a camp to be determined, a man that has gone through many fight camps is former welterweight champion George St. Pierre. Our Fight Network crew was recently in Montreal with the former champion and he discussed the mentality a fighter must adopt to get through such a difficult process as preparing for a fight at the elite level of combat sports. You have to understand when, you're, when you are in a training camp, you're not in a, in, in a mood to to slow your pace, you know, to, to hold, hold on to your strike. You're gonna go a full out. You know, when you're in training camp, it's the same thing with a lot of other fighters, not only R Rory, Francis Carmon, Nordin, Alex Garcia. You, when you see your name on the board, you know, and I, and I know because it happened to me a lot, like I was like, during, during my training camp, I was with, training with those guys. So you know it's gonna be a, a tough round, you know? But it depends where you're at and your training. If you're in a, like off season, it could be fun time, you know, like more technical. But if the guy is in his training camp, towards the end of his training camp, he just, he can't wait to fight. He want to get out of his misery, basically. So of course he's gonna have some hunger and he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna go hard on you. And Miles Jury will return to the cage on January the 3rd for a big lightweight fight against Donald Cerrone at UFC 182 in Las Vegas. With an unblemished pro record, Jury will look for his seventh consecutive win inside of the octagon and a step closer to a title fight at 155 pounds. Jury sat down with us to chat about his mindset when he enters the cage, which has proven successful thus far in the UFC. You know, always going for the win, that's like, if anything, that's like probably fifth or sixth type things, you know, that are important to me. Always coming in shape, always making sure I did my, my prep work, the, the training camp, I did that correctly, making sure I'm listening to my coaches. And a big thing to me is uh, making sure in the off season when I don't have a fight coming up is that I'm getting better. You know, I got into this sport to be the best fighter I can be. I feel like getting better and constantly evolving my game and uh, constantly adapting to, to new styles of fighting and all that is, uh, is, is what, where it's at for me. And uh, I'm very, very happy and proud to be doing that. And those are all of your newsmakers for this week. For the latest of what is happening in the world of mixed martial arts, go check out fightnetwork.com. When we come back, John Ramdean will join us for three rounds as we look ahead to the UFC's final card of 2014 this Saturday night in Brazil when Fight News Now continues.